Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to thank the member from Port Moody Coquitlam for bringing this important bill uh, to this place, and I'm very happy to speak to it and express my strong support for it. As other men others have mentioned, this bill proposes to move open net salmon aquaculture pens to safe, closed containment systems over a five year period. This will have significant benef beneficial impacts on the survival of West Coast salmon and Pacific ecosystems in general. The five species of Pacific salmon are a keystone of aquatic ecosystems in British Columbia. Salmon mature in the open Pacific, then migrate hundreds of kilometres up inland to spawn. And I want to mention here, even though it's already been mentioned today, that the sponsor of this bill has swum the length of the Fraser River twice, 1,400 kilometres each time, so he knows what the salmon have to go through. Uh, admittedly, he's only done it downstream, so he hasn't <laughs> fought the currents all the way. But it is, it is still an impressive feat and is a real testament to his efforts to save wild salmon. And as the salmon fight those currents, they are bringing rich nutrients from the ocean into the interior rivers, lakes, and forests. One simply has to witness the spectacle of wildlife around a salmon spawning ground to understand the significance of this. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of bald eagles gather at the spawning sites to feast on the spent spawners, moving from river to river as the different spawning events unfold through the summer, fall, and winter. These eagles come from all over Western North America, from Arizona and Colorado, Montana, Alberta, Northwest Territories and the salmon runs are an essential part of their winter survival, as well as the survival of a myriad of other species, including bear, waterfowl, and others that rely on salmon, including the orcas that feed on them as they, they come back out of the ocean through the narrows of Johnson Strait and other uh, places on the coast. The young salmon, young salmon swim downstream to the Pacific, usually spending time in the rich estuaries of the river mouths, which act as nurseries. Estuaries in BC have been prime locations for industrial activity. Port facilities on the tidal flats of the Fraser Estuary, log sorts up and down the coast, and recently a new proposal for an LNG port on one of the most important eelgrass beds at the mouth of the Skeena. First Nations have also relied on salmon for millennia. For many indigenous communities across British Columbia and the Yukon, Salmon are the centerpiece of their food supply throughout the year and have always been central to their culture. They were an abundant, predictable, and easily preserved resource. In my writing, First Nations have traveled each year to significant concentration sites such as Okanagan Falls and south of the border at Kettle Falls. In the Okanagan Nation or seal culture, the salmon is one of the four food chiefs, along with Skimshis, the bear, Speedlum, the bitterroot, and Sia, the Saskatoon berry. But salmon populations have suffered greatly over the past century. Heavy fishing in the early 1900s significantly reduced many stocks. Clear cut logging along streams degraded spawning habitat. Hydroelectric dams have wiped out, wiped out 20 salmon stocks in British Columbia, most of them on the Columbia River. Climate change threatens to diminish stocks further as spring freshets come earlier and weaker, and summer droughts become longer, drier, and hotter. Salmon die in warm, oxygen-poor waters. When I was young, there were few salmon that returned each year to the Okanagan River to spawn. Although the Okanagan was one of the last two viable sockeye runs in the Columbia River system, only about 5,000 fish came back each fall. Chinook salmon were even more endangered one population estimate of the Okanagan spawning population from about a decade ago was only seven individuals. But some years ago, serious efforts began to restore the sockeye populations of the Okanagan. In the last decade, these efforts have been spearheaded by the Okanagan Nation Alliance. Through their efforts to rebuild the spawning channels of the Okanagan River, sockeye number now number in the hundreds of thousands in good years. Last year, a half million sockeye entered the Columbia, destined for the Okanagan, but all but 10,000 died in the warm water pools below the 11 dams 
they have to deal with on their way upstream. This year was cooler and wetter, and the return was good. It's clear that salmon populations on the Pacific coast of Canada face a multitude of challenges, and any addition to these cumulative stressors could tip populations over the edge, sending them into decline and local extinction. This bill would remove one of those challenges, a significant one. We know that open net salmon farms have impact on wild salmon populations through diseases, parasites, pollution, and escapement. Remember, these are Atlantic salmon in these pens, and when they escape and try to spawn in their local rivers, it's a serious problem for wild salmon populations. We know that the aquatic ecosystems of British Columbia and much of the terrestrial ecosystems around spawning rivers are being degraded because of this situation. We know there is a problem, and we know the answer. We know what we have to do. We simply have to have the political will to fix the problem. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, in the past, when we have faced similar situations, we have been successful. In the 1960s and 70s, we discovered that DDT was causing dramatic population declines of birds of prey around the world. Eagles and falcons were literally disappearing. We knew the cause. It was DDT. So we banned that pesticide, even though it was costly in the short term for the agriculture industry. And I know that impact. I grew up on a small apple orchard, and I saw what my father had to do in terms of new equipment to deal with the new pesticides that replaced DDT. But we fixed the problem and have seen eagle and falcon populations rebound in spectacular fashion over the past 40 years. And the agriculture industry has not only survived, but it has flourished. And we can do the same for wild salmon. This bill calls for a shift from open net salmon farms to closed containment systems. That's the right thing to do. We can still have a successful salmon farming industry on the Pacific coast, one that is based on sound environmental principles, one that could command higher prices for its product because of those principles. Canada can become a world leader in closed containment systems as the world makes this shift. So, Mr. Speaker, I urge every member of this House to support Bill C-228 and save our wild salmon. Lim Lim, thank you.